Hey, what is going on guys? Arvidad Stealth here, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at 15 of the strongest champions, three for each role that you should be preparing to use if you're looking for some free low for the start of season 10. All right, so starting things off, taking a look at a couple top laners here. First up is gonna be Mordekaiser, and I, I just really don't understand why this champion has not been nerfed yet. He's been so strong for such a long period of time now, and he's still one of the best top laners in this patch, not getting nerfed in patch 10.1, or at least it doesn't look like it right now. So definitely still prepared to be using uh, Mordekaiser for the start of season 10. If your main goal is to climb right away, then he is going to be the strongest top laner that you can pick up. All you really gotta do to succeed with this champion is proc your passive in a team fight and watch it just drain the enemy's health bars. If you can just get into the middle of a fight with Mordekaiser and be getting that AoE damage off, then you're gonna just win fights by doing that pretty much every single time. And with his ultimate, he can make somebody completely useless on the enemy team. So even if a fed member on the enemy team enters a fight and they're they're looking to be a problem, Mordekaiser can just press R on them if they got like a fed cast it in or a fed AD carry and just make them completely useless for the rest of the game. Second top laner on the list is going to be Orn. So really good tank top laner right now. I would say he's the best tank top laner in the game at the moment. Really good engage in his kit as well. So he pretty much has everything that you would want from a good tank up in the top lane. He still can deal an immense amount of damage as well while still building full tank. You don't even build a single damage item on this champion and you can still basically single out the enemy AD carry in a team fight and just take them out single handedly. Now you do have options for your rune page on Ornn. You don't just want to take Grasp every single game. Either Grasp or Aftershock, depending on the situation, are both good choices. So if you're in a matchup to where you think you're going to be able to trade a lot in the early game, auto attack, and get a lot of Grasp procs, then look to take that for sure. But if you're in like a range matchup, or if you don't think you're going to be able to trade a ton in the early game, then look to take the Aftershock. And then for the third top laner, it's going to be Darius. So really good bruiser AD top laner at the moment. I'd say he's the best for the majority of elos. If you are looking for a champion in that class, he can do pretty well into most of the meta tank picks right now. He can do pretty well into a lot of other bruisers too in this patch. And he is one of the strongest early game top laners in the game. So you're going to be able to win early game in a lot of your matchups. You're going to have the ability to roam first in a lot of matchups, help your jungler out. And with, with jungle XP changes in this season being really important and just being able to get your jungler ahead if you can do that in the early game and if you can just get them snowballing it just does so much for your team so playing an early game top laner like Darius is going to be really good here for the start of season 10. Taking a look at a couple jungle picks now, first one here is going to be Echo. So ever since Echo got buffed a while back, he has been dominating in the jungle. If you are looking to add an AP jungler to your champion pool for the start of season 10, then I would definitely make it Echo. He doesn't have the best first couple levels in terms of like early skirmishing compared to some of the other junglers that are going to be following him here on this list. But once you do reach your core items on Echo, once you get your runic Echoes, your protobel and your Lich Bane, you can really start to take over over games there in the mid game. Just a really good jungler at controlling objectives too. Once you hit that mid game, he has the ability to pretty much insta give somebody that tries to walk in and tries to tries to contest for an objective. So if you can get vision around objectives with Echo and you can see the enemy team walking in and you can line up your W in a choke point and just get a multi-man W off, then those can single-handedly just win you fights and win you games with this champion. So my second jungler on the list is going to be Olaf, really good early game jungler. Unlike Echo, he does have a very good early game skirmish. So first couple levels as Olaf, you should be looking to play proactive and you should be looking to play aggressive. If you can look to get an early invade off, contest the enemy jungler for scuttle crabs in the early game, and you can win those fights, then you're just going to be able to take over games on this champion. The reason to why he got so much stronger here in the past couple patches is because of the catch of XP removal. Because of that, if he's able to win early game skirmishes and he's able to then invade the enemy jungler's camps and take camps from the enemy jungler, he's just going to set them very far behind in the early game. And if you can do that, you're going to find yourself a couple levels up on the enemy jungler as Olaf. And as long as you can play for objectives, play good macro throughout the early to mid game, you should be able to close out games extremely quickly with this champion for the start of season 10. And then for my third jungle pick here, it is going to be Warwick. So this champion has just gotten so much stronger over the past couple of patches here. So many direct and indirect changes and the way the meta has shifted here for the start of season 10 is basically perfect for Warwick. 
If you can use your E correctly in those early game skirmishes, then you're going to win out on them pretty much every single time. The damage reduction from that ability, you got the fear coming out of it as well, and then you also have like the sustain and the percent health damage coming out of your Q, which just makes this skirmish throughout the early game very strong compared to a lot of other junglers. He also does have the ability to get around the map very quickly because of his W. He can be in mid lane one moment, then three seconds later, he can be all the way down to bot lane because of that. That insane movement speed he gets from his W so that's just so good for the current meta because if you can just be around the map be in so many different places at once then you're gonna be able to snowball the early game really hard with this champion. So moving on to a few mid lane picks now, my first one is going to be Diana. So ever since the Diana rework, she has been performing much better for the majority of ELOs. She's actually a champion now before she hits level 6. Pre rework Diana just really couldn't do anything until she did get that level 6 in most scenarios. But with the new Diana, having that gap closer there at level 3 allows you to look for some more early kills in the laning phase, allows you to skirmish much better if you get into like a 2v2 at Scuttlecrab in the early game. Reworked Diana is going to be much better than the pre-reworked Diana. Once you do hit the mid to late game, you don't have the same one-shot potential as the old Diana because you just don't have the same ratios, the same damage on your abilities, but you do have a much better team fight with the new Diana. If you can get a multi-man ultimate off in a team fight, then you're going to be doing some pretty good work on the champion. Now for the build path on Diana, keep note that Ardent Sensor is getting nerfed for 10.1. It's no longer going to proc off her W, so if you're going for that build, make sure you do swap it up for the start of Season 10. I think that Rod of Ages into Nashers and Zonyas is pretty good. You can also go for Protobelt into Nashers and Zonyas as well. So next up here is going to be Mr. Minus 5 MS. So Cassidy is getting nerfed in 10.1. He's losing 5 movement speed, but it's not going to matter at all. Like this champion doesn't really even need movement speed. Honestly, once you hit level 16 on the pick, you just press R and you move all the way across the map. So minus 5 MFs on Cassidy. It hurts him a little bit throughout the early to mid game, but it's not really going to matter too much. And he's still going to be one of the best mid laners, if not the best mid laner for the start of season 10. What kind of tipped him over the top into OP status was the change to Presence of Mind that Rune is basically just perfectly made for Cassidy because it gives you mana back on takedowns, it also gives you maximum mana on takedowns, so that Rune is just so good for him at the moment. You also run the Fleet Footwork there which allows you to sustain through the early game, really nice for the champion, and I just feel like the weaknesses that he used to have aren't really glaring weaknesses anymore. His early game actually isn't even all that bad, and for a champion that's scales so well into the mid to late game, I feel like his early game should be a lot more punishable, but it really isn't at the moment. And then for my final mid lane pick, it is going to be Rumble. So Rumble, one of the best early to mid game skirmishing champions you can play at the moment. And with the emphasis on those early dragons being so strong here for the start of season 10, I do think Rumble is one of the best mid laners that you can play. You can get a ton of solo kills in the early game on this champion. People are not going to expect the amount of damage you can do in the early game because they probably just never played against him. So you can find yourself getting a couple solo kills pretty much every game on the pick. Once you do reach your mid game spike there of the Leandries and the Sorg Boots. If you can just start team fighting, if you can hit some decent ultimates with the champion, you're going to have a ton of success on him. So moving down to the bot lane for a few picks, my first one up here is going to be Caitlyn. So Caitlyn was one AD carry who did benefit a lot from the AD carry item changes. She does great with the new Storm Razor there. Storm Razor, Infinity Edge, and Rapid Fire Cannon as your three core items are so strong on Caitlyn at the moment. Now if you do want to stick to a cookie cutter build, then just look to build that every single game on Caitlyn. But there's also another build setup going around to where you go for Infinity Edge, you go Berserker Greaves, and then you just build three cloaks of agility. So you get to 100% crit very early on in the game for a pretty cheap amount of gold and your auto attacks are going to start to hurt for a ton and you're basically going to be dealing like consistent burst damage as an AD carry. And then for my second AD carry pick, it is going to be Jin. So he's very strong right now for similar reasons as to why Caitlyn's strong. He just benefits so much from the new Storm Razor. That three item spike there is just so good on Jin. Gives yourself a ton of damage. Gives yourself some really nice picks, some really nice kiting potential. The synergy between the Storm Razor slow with the rapid fire cannon range and then being able to just line up your W after that and find picks is really nice for Jin in the mid game. 
And then for my third AD carry, it is going to be Misfortune. So Misfortune's always been one of the better low elo AD carries, but she's even a pretty consistent pick right now, all the way up into the higher elos. We're seeing a lot of pro players even playing Misfortune right now in this patch. So very strong AD carry that you can pick up no matter what elo you're in at the moment. If you are in the lower elos though, 100%, I would definitely have Misfortune in your champion pool. So with that new build setup that's come up on Misfortune over the past couple months here of Essence Reaver into Infinity Edge, and then you can either go Storm Razor or Bloodthirster as your third item, just so much AD with that build. So your ultimate is going to be hurting for a ton in team fights. Your burst damage from your just auto attacks and your Q are going to be a lot in team fights, and you just rely a lot less on kiting with this build. Like you don't have any attack speed with this build, so you don't really need to know how to kite super well in team fights. You just do have a lot more of that upfront damage. And then for support, first up here, we got Leona. So Leona, really good tanky engaged support. This champion is just so strong at the moment because with her W, she's basically unkillable throughout the laning phase. Whenever you look to go for an all-in with Leona, if you proc your Aftershock, you have your W up. Even if the engage isn't the best, you're not gonna die from it. You're just so tanky. You, you even deal a lot of damage with this champion as well. A lot of the time, if you do look for engages on the AD carry or even the support in the early game, you're gonna be able to chunk them to like half HP. So Leona just overall right now is a very strong support. And then I would say right now a smidge better than Leona down in the support role if you're looking for that aggressive support is the Nautilus. I'm so surprised this champion has been this strong for this long of a time. It feels like Nautilus has been an OP pick down in the support role throughout the entirety of Season 9 or at least most of Season 9 and he's still going to be one of the best supports here that you can play for the start of Season 10. Similar to Leona, he does have very good snowball potential in the early game, does have very good early game skirmish, and once you hit level 6, you almost guarantee yourself a free kill, especially if you are going up against a very squishy support, somebody like a Sona or a Soraka. You just press R on them, you follow up with your crowd control, and you just burst them out, and they really, there's really just no counterplay to it. And then to round it out is going to be Soraka, so definitely the best enchanter support that you can look to pick up for Season 10. She did benefit a lot from some of the preseason changes. The new Ocean Dragon especially is really good on Soraka. If you can secure one of those in the early game, just having that regen while you're in combat is so good for the champion because you can just continue regening while you're healing your team in fights and while you're looking to fight with the champion, so that's just really good for Soraka. She also is just such a strong mid to late game team fight champion your ultimate such an easy tool to use and it's just such an influential ability once you reach those mid to late game fights the new Shirelias is also really good on Soraka it does really good as a third item on her just allows her to peel really nicely in those mid to late game fights allows her to stay safer from those champions trying to dive on top of her all right, so that is going to be all for the video, guys. Hopefully, this does give you a very good idea of what you should be looking to pick up here for the start of Season 10 and what you should be looking to use if you are looking for some early season free low. So with that being said, guys, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you have yet to already. So thanks for watching. Have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.